there's an oil leak between where this cover and the uh, crankcase side on this side bolt together. There's a gasket in there. I ordered the new gasket and the new gasket came in. So what I want to do is I want to replace that gasket. Hopefully that'll take care of this leak before I go putting any new oil in it. Rather than having it just leak all winter long, wasting oil, which is uh, what I was going to let it do originally until spring. So I could do it in warm weather, but I just decided, you know what, since I'm, I'm dealing with this oil change and everything else, I'm going to put the new one in. So to get this case off, first thing you've got to do is you've got to unbolt the uh, footrest on this side. And then once you unbolt the footrest on this side, then you've got to remove the shifter lever, which is just one bolt in here, and then that slides off. And then you take a snap ring off, and then you can remove the high-low gear shift lever. And what I did was I made sure that uh, I noted that it was in high gear before I took it off, and I made sure that this didn't rotate at all while I was taking it off. And uh, once you take that clip off, you just pull up on the lever so that the uh, a little locking thing clears this notch and it slides right off and then there's a second snap ring on the inside that actually keeps that lever from wanting to travel inwards and you have to remove that snap ring also so that once you get this cover unbolted it will slide off of this shaft and then the step to get this cover unbolted the first thing you've got to do is you've got to remove the pull start assembly which actually this one's broken I might take a look and see whether or not I can fix that while I have it off so I'm going to remove that and then I've also got to remove the speedometer drive cable assembly. And then on the fuel tank, I removed the fuel tank and I bought a new fuel shutoff valve because this one, the lever's broken, and that's why it's very hard to turn it on and off, and that's why I hadn't shut it off when I finished my ride. And I definitely want a new one on there that I can shut off so that in the future, when I finish riding for the day, I'll make sure it's in the off position so that I don't have that happen anymore. Okay, I've removed the uh, starter recoil assembly, the pull starter assembly, and uh, now the next step is this part right here, which is called the cup, has to be removed. And that involves uh, taking this nut off, which of course when you go to turn the nut, it just wants to turn the crankshaft. So you've got to uh, find a way to keep this from rotating while you're uh, crankshaft rotating while you're trying to remove that nut. Also, as you can see, this gasket doesn't look like it's been uh, doing its job, either that or through the hole where the uh, broken rope was. Water has gotten in here and rusted this a bit, so I'm going to put a little bit of penetrating lubricant on here to try and help free this up. Alright, let's get this nut off. I put a little uh, penetrating oil on it, let it soak, give it a little bit of a tap on the hammer. And then I locked the large screwdriver in here through these two slots on this cup and then up against the uh, shaft here. So that keeps this from moving so I can unscrew this nut. Alright, once you've removed the nut that holds this on, uh, this is a light press fit onto here. So you put a large screwdriver behind it and pry out gently as you gently tap on that and it'll pop free if you're lucky. Unless you've got a bunch of water in here that's rusted this out, then you get a whole other issue. But that actually is inside the crankcase there. You can actually see the seal actually rides on this, and that's what seals this. Okay, now I remove all of the screws that hold the uh, crankshaft cover. And first, of course, I remove the speedometer drive, which is just two screws, and that pops off. And that's just got like a, a, a slot that this engages into, so that's pretty straightforward. Now uh, I've got all of the screws removed, and this is the only screw I haven't removed. This screw is the only one that's extra long. That's kind of self-evident by how long the case is right here, as opposed to all the other ones. All the screws are identical except for this one. This one's also got a washer on it, which makes it different than all the other ones. Okay, I was able to get this apart. Uh, after quite a bit of fussing, I was able to get the cover to come, come off. And uh, one of the things you're going to make sure of is you want to look on this side of the inside of the cover and see if there are any shims stuck to these bearings because the oil tends to make them stick to the bearings. You want to take them off and then make sure you put them on the appropriate shaft. So there's a shim here, shim here, 
shim there, shim here, and then uh, this shim right here I actually found in the bottom. Probably when I pulled the cover off, this fell off. The way that I know it goes here is the fact that when I was pulling the cover back, I saw it laying on top of this gear, and it doesn't fit on any of these other shafts, so it goes on this shaft right here, which is like a uh, starter. It's part of the starter assembly. Anyways, uh, now what I've discovered is that this doesn't unplug inside here, so what you've got to do is you've got to loosen up the uh, wire ties. There's some hold downs here, one here, and there's one here, you can loosen those. And then there's a couple of plastic wire ties here, you cut these, and then you unplug it right here, way back here, and then you can uh, separate the cover completely. Okay, this is that plug that goes over to the starter, uh, the starter assembly. Stator assembly, S-T-A-T-O-R. Anyways, um, there's also another cable that goes around back. It goes under the battery box and comes up right over here. And there's actually two plugs here, but this is the one on the left side, looking at it from the rear, that you have to undo. That ends up going to that cable that I was just showing you. So you have to undo that in order to get all that cable out so you can uh, remove the uh, side cover completely without having to remove the stator assembly from the inside of the cover. So, I don't know, what, what's easier? Taking the, uh, unbolting the stuff from the inside of the cover or just doing what I'm doing here? Now with those plugs undone and the cable ties all released, I've got enough slack here. Now I can pull the cover completely off and uh, I can work on cleaning up the, uh, the, uh, cleaning off the old gasket material that's left behind and work on putting this back together. Uh, one more note, during disassembly this shaft right here actually came out with the cover and you want to remove that shaft and reinsert it where it goes because it actually goes through this dog right here and into uh, the crankcase and obviously it's going to be a lot easier if we just put that in now and that's going to hold that in position so then we slide the case back on it'll all line up as opposed to trying to get this to go engage that and then line up. So I'm just gonna take this shaft out and reinsert it where it belongs. Now comes the uh, very unglamorous job of removing all of the old gasket material uh, that's really kind of stuck on there. And some, some places it's not even really uh, there anymore. And in some places it's stuck on pretty good. So it's gonna be scraped off. Problem is, is you scrape it, little pieces in that tend to want to just fall down they're going to get into these gears and make a mess anyways. So the best way uh, I can see to handle this is to remove as many of these gears as I can so that the stuff either just falls out or just falls right in the bottom here where I can wipe it out later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the, as many of these gears as I can, but I want to make sure that I uh, take note of exactly how these go in here. So uh, I know there's a shim here on this gear, but this gear actually comes right off and there's no timing marks or anything on this gear and then the other thing I want to make sure is is you know is there a, uh, a particular way that this goes on um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this down with the shim facing up and the shim is the outboard side that takes care of that gear and then uh, this gear here this gear goes on to the right of these two shafts and it's got a shim on the outside and then it's got the dogs actually face the inside and then this one is the uh, one on the left that's a completely different gear it's actually got a needle bearing in it on the end there. And it comes off as an assembly. And again, I'm going to put that down with the shim facing up. And uh, now comes this. This is like a gear that has dogs on it. going to 
come out. Okay, that's actuated by this sleeve here, so I'm gonna have to put the camera down to make sure I get that out with two hands. It right, turns out the easiest way to do that was to just uh, remove this shaft that I had taken out from the, uh, stuck on the inside of the case and had reinserted back in. Here, pull that back out. That allowed me to rotate that clutch dog up just enough so I could uh, release it from this slot right here and take it right out. Now that allows me to take, all right, I can't take this gear off. This gear is actually held on by a snap ring and I'm gonna leave that gear in place. And uh, that's about all I really wanna do here as far as clearing this out. I can also remove this assembly here. And then there's a shim there. I'm gonna take that shim off and put it on the back side here where it belongs so it doesn't uh, just fall off while I'm working and get lost. And then I'll take that gear out if it comes out. All right, now I've finished scraping off all of the uh, heavy parts of the gasket. There's just some residue left on here. I'm gonna have to clean up. Uh, I'll use some solvent and uh, a wire brush to clean that up. And then you can see all of the debris and stuff that fell inside here as I was cleaning. That's exactly what I wanted to avoid getting on all those gears and everything. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my shop vac and I'm gonna vac out as much of that as I can. Uh, before I uh, go to reassemble everything. Uh, interesting to note, the gasket was really well bonded to all the surfaces up here, but down below here, you can actually see I've completely removed it to the metal because it wasn't even really bonding uh, through this whole area right here, which is the lowest sump area. So that's where the oil just sits all the time, and that was not really bonded to the metal well at all. And then none of the gasket was bonded to the, this half of the cover. This whole half of the cover, when it came off, the gasket just stayed behind. So when I put the new gasket in that I ordered, uh, I'm gonna install the new gasket. I'm gonna make sure I run a bead of RTV sealant along that also. That's gonna help keep that sealed. It's also gonna help with any imperfections in the aluminum surface that uh, may have arisen from uh, me cleaning it. And uh, also there's a couple of gouges here that I did uh, inadvertently when I was getting frustrated on trying to get the cover off and stuck a screwdriver in there which is never a good idea but uh, luckily those all tend to be confined to up here which is really high up and above the uh, normal oil level plus with the RTV sealant and the gas new gasket it's going to seal just fine now I finished cleaning up all of the uh, gasket mating surfaces got all the gasket uh, residue off it's nice and clean and ready to go and now I'm going to start reassembling the gears, put all the gears back in the way they're supposed to be, and then uh, we'll get some RTV sealant and the new gasket in place and uh, bolt it up. Okay, the cover's reinstalled. I put a thin film of RTV sealant on both sides of the gasket, put the gasket in place, got the cover in, tapped it into place with a soft mallet, installed all 14 of the cap screws and torqued them to factory specs using a torque wrench which in this case uh, was six to nine foot-pounds, uh, tightening them in a crisscross pattern to, uh, to assure proper seating of the cover. So now uh, I've got to uh, install the uh, cup here, uh, that, that part they call the cup that actually installs right here. And uh, then I can start reinstalling the um, uh, high-low range lever and the uh, foot shifter and then also uh, I have to remember to put in this bolt that came out of the bottom here I took out which is I didn't show before but that's just basically this right here it's got a little ball bearing on the end it's spring loaded that screws up in there and what that is is that ball bearing rides in little detents on the side of this uh, uh, sleeve on this high low range lever and what that does is that ensures that this high low range lever uh, stays locked, I guess, into its uh, various positions. All right. Before I reinstall this cup, I just wanted to make mention of the fact that uh, there's actually an O-ring inside here. It's in a groove. It's kind of hard to see, but it's inside there. It's actually on the parts list. Uh, actually, in the service manual, it mentions when you uh, 
I've taken this out and mentioned it's an O-ring and I didn't see one at first and now I, after cleaning this up, I see that it's actually down inside there. So obviously if that's uh, deteriorated, you're going to want to replace that with a new one. Um, what that does is that uh, keeps oil from migrating along this, this shaft right here, this blind area um, coming out and leak. And then the outside edge is actually, there's a seal in here. Once you remove these three screws, take this plate off, and you can actually replace that seal. So if I end up getting a leak there, that's pretty easy to change. I don't have to take this whole thing apart to change that. Same thing with this seal here. This seal here is actually an exterior seal also. So again, I can remove this seal and replace it without having to take this whole case off, which is great, because I didn't order the new seals. If I do end up with a leak there, I'm going to want to change it.